So in this presentation, I'm going to be talking about copyright uh, with a particular focus on photographs. So we're going to talk about things like copyright legislation, such as the Copyright Act 1968, who owns the copyright of something, um, the copyright symbol, we'll talk about terms and conditions and why copyright is important. So the Copyright Act uh, was legislated in 1968. Uh, all the politicians in the federal government got together and voted on a law, enacted a law, and they called it the Copyright Act 1968. Um, it protects all literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic work. So literary work is things that are written down and text. Dramatic are things like poems and plays and things like that. Musical is pretty obvious. It's obviously music and artistic. Artistic are things like paintings, drawings, um, things like that. Uh, and, of course, photographs, which is why we're concerned about the Copyright Act. So it protects all of those things from unauthorised reproduction. So you can't produce it, uh, reproduce any of those things without the express permission of the copyright owner. It's been updated a number of times, uh, if you're interested, since 1968. Uh, first in 2000, I think, and then 2006, it was updated um, just to cater, with things, cater for things like the internet and CD reproducing. So... If you are the owner of the copyright, so if you're the owner of a copyright of a literary or dramatic or, in our case, a photograph, it gives you exclusive rights to let other people to copy the work, perform it in public, broadcast it, publish it, and make adaptations on it. If you are not the owner of a copyright of work, you are not allowed to do any of these things. You're not allowed to copy a photograph without permission. You are not allowed to put it up in public. You're not allowed to broadcast it. You're not allowed to publish it. And you're not allowed to make adaptations of it without the express permission of the copyright owner. Copyright protection is automatic. As soon as you paint a picture, as soon as you take a photograph, it's automatically protected under copyright law. Because in Australia, copyright protection is automatic, it applies whether or not there is a copyright symbol included. So this symbol down the bottom here, if you include that or not, it doesn't matter. It is still covered under copyright. All right. As soon as I take that photo, as soon as I paint that painting, it is automatically protected and no one has permission to copy it, to publish it, to reproduce it, to broadcast it without the permission of the owner of the copyright. However, it is often recommended that you include a copyright symbol just to let people know that it is covered and that you are the owner. You can see down the bottom here, the copyright John Citizen 2012 is an example of letting people know that it is covered by copyright, who owns it and what year it was actually created. So I'll just... So to insert a actual copyright symbol in Word, you can actually just go to insert, come across here to symbols, click the symbols and click on copyright. And that's actually the way I create copyright symbols. And then to get it into Photoshop, I'll just go here and go control C, go across to Photoshop and press control V. So how long does copyright last? Well, it lasts for 70 years from the author's death or from the first year of publication after the author's death, if you want to get technical. So if I took a photograph now and it wasn't published until after I was dead, that's when the 70 years would start. If I took a photograph now and it was published now, the 70 years would start from when I died. Okay, and that's how long it's, it's actually uh, covered. So no one's allowed to copy it, reproduce it, broadcast that photograph until... 70 without permission until 70 years after I've died after that time they can do what they want with it So who is the owner? All right? Well It's important to distinguish before we talk about the owner It's important to distinguish between the owner of a physical work and the copyrighted owner of a work Just because you purchase the physical work doesn't mean you own the copyrighted work. So here's an example You sell a physical photograph in a frame from a gallery that does, not give the, that does not give the person that purchased the physical photograph in a frame the right to reproduce it or publish it or any of those other things. Okay, so you can't go to a, a gallery, 
get a get a picture off the wall, buy it, you know, pay pay some money for it, take it home, scan it, and put it up on the internet. You own the physical photograph. You certainly don't own the copyright. Another example is if you purchase a digital song from iTunes that does not give you the right to reproduce it or publish it. You can't then go and copy that song, put it up onto, you know, put it into a BitTorrent and allow people to copy that or copy that to other people. You own the song to listen to it yourself and that's it. You don't own the copyright. You don't own the rights to reproduce it. So who is the owner of a, of a work? Well, when it comes to photographs, generally the owner of the work will be the person who took the photo. Okay, so let's just get that clear in our head. Whoever takes the photo owns the copyright for the work. For example, you go and take a photograph of the school with the school cam camera, you own the copyright, not the school. It doesn't matter that we actually own the, own the camera. There are some situations, however, where this is not the case. And uh, photos taken in the course of employment, photos taken for the government, and commission photos. You know, commission photos mean someone pays you to take the photos. So, photos taken in the course of employment. If an employee takes a photo as part of his or her job, the first owner of the copyright will be the employer. Unless there is a contract being signed between the employer and the photographer stating something else. You can override these rules with a contract that's signed by both parties. Photos that are taken for the government, the government own. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter what sort of way you're employed or anything like that. It's funny how the government write in these special little rules for themselves. Commission photos. Now commission photos means that someone pays you to go out and take a photo. And this is probably one of the more common ways that um, people are paid to go and take photographs, not so much uh, through employment nowadays. So for photos taken after 30th of July 1998, the general rule depends on the purpose for which the photos were taken. If the photos were taken for private or domestic use, such as family portraits or wedding photos, the first owner of the copyright in them is the client, the person that paid for the photos to be taken, unless the photographer and client agree otherwise. So unless the client and the photographer sit down, have a contract um, and have it signed, it'll be the client that owns them for domestic purposes. If they were taken for commercial purposes, um, say to sell a house or to sell a car or to advertise a new restaurant or any other commercial purposes, the photographer will be the owner of the copyright. Unless, of course, the photographer and the client agree otherwise. So if they, you know, the, the client and the photographer sit down and have a contract signed out stating who exactly owns the copyright. Doesn't matter whose camera was used, the person that pressed the button owns the copyright. Photos taken before the 1st of January 1955 are not copyrighted. They're said to be public domain and you can pretty much use them for whatever you want. And you can find a lot of them online. There are a couple of exceptions to this. So if I take a photo of my friend's wedding, so when I ask these questions, I want you to just pause the video and have a think about it. If I take a photo of my friend's wedding, I was not paid to do it. Who owns the copyright? If you said the person that commissioned it, you are wrong. It doesn't say anyone about who payment being exchanged. It's not a commissioned photograph, um, photograph, so the photographer owns the copyright. It's just like any other photo. I take a photo of my friend's birthday party. To put in a photo album at home, I was given $50 to take the photo. Commission for private and domestic use, client owns the copyright, okay? I take a photo of, of at work of work-related things as part of my job. Pause it now and just have a think about this. Photos taken in the course of employment, employer owns the copyright. Okay. A teacher takes a photo of the school with the school's camera to go in the school magazine. Pause it now and have a think about this. Photos taken in the course of employer em employment, employer owns the copyright. Someone hires me 
to take photos of his brand new car to sell it in the local newspaper. Okay, someone's hiring me, that means they're paying me money. Just pause it now and have a think about this. Because it was commissioned for commercial use, the photographer owns the copyright. This is different to the commissioned for private use. All right, because this one, this one was the same, someone was getting paid to take the photos, but because it was for domestic use, the client owns the copyright. Because this is commercial use, the photographer owns the copyright. A photo taken of Adolf Hitler in 1941, uh, he was paid by the newspaper for the work. Well, anything taken before 1951 is in the public domain, so no one owns it. All of these can be mitigated. All of these instances can be mitigated by putting a contract in place and stating specifically who owns the copyright. Um, most photographers will do, get you to do this. Anyone that's got half a brain will get you to do this. Specific terms and conditions allow you to make any kind of uh, alterations to the agreements. For example, in iTunes, uh, I think they allow you, and this is a thing straight out of iTunes, um, allow users to transfer songs and videos to up to five computers burn several copies of the same playlist to CD and sync to an unlimited number of iPods. All right, so that's specifically said in the um, terms and conditions. So that's exactly what you can do with, um, uh, they, they allow you extra things from the default copyright, um, uh, copyright restrictions. Facebook, on the other hand, Let's read this aloud. You own all the content and information you post. These are, these are specific lines out of the terms and conditions of Facebook. You own all the content and information you post on Facebook, and you can control how it is shared through your privacy and application settings. In addition, for content that is covered by intellectual property rights, like photos and videos, you specifically give the following permission subject to your privacy and application settings you grant us a non-exclusive, transferable, sub-license, royalty-free, worldwide license to use any IP content that you post on or in connection with Facebook. That red section there pretty much means that they can do whatever they want with your photographs. They can use them for advertising, they can um, sell them, they can reproduce them, they can pretty much do whatever they want non-exclusive transferable sub-license royalty fee and they don't have to pay you anything. The IP license end when you delete your IP content for the account. So you can essentially stop them from uh, continuing to use your intellectual property by um, deleting it from your account. Now they say they need these rights to use your photos on the site and with third-party Facebook apps. You need to make a decision if you trust them to use your content in the way that they want to, all right? If you don't trust them, or if you don't want them to use it for advertising and things like that, it might be worth taking some of your content off Facebook because you have granted them rights by uploading them and, and you signed these specific terms and conditions when you signed up to Facebook. It's an interesting note here. They don't own the copyright, just the right to resell it, okay? Which is interesting. Not much difference. So you need to read the fine print. Often photographers will require you to sign over the copyright ownership to the people running the competition. Uh, these are for photography competitions. Often, often photography competitions are a rights grab. So when they when you upload and enter the competition, you give the rights to reproduce that photograph to the owner of the um, photography competition, and they'll often then on sell them or. Um, sometimes uh, they'll run them to get photographs for their website. So if you are, say, a... a skateboarding uh, company and you're just starting to create new skateboard decks, you might run a photography competition to say, you know, take the best skate photo and we'll give you, I don't know, 500 bucks. All right, they get thousands of entries. Now, when you enter the competition, you are agreeing to give them rights to your photographs and they can use them in advertising and things like that. It's a good way of getting a lot of photographs for not much money. All right.
And when you're entering competitions, it's important to read the terms and conditions before you enter to see if you're prepared to give up those rights. And if you are, that's fine. But just be aware of what you're getting into. Um, they can sell them on to people as well. And there's a, there's a link there if you want to go to that one. So finally, or well not finally, but you can't share or make copyright uh, copies of copyrighted work without permission. Um, the punishment is for individuals is fifty thousand dollars per offence, or up to fifty thousand dollars per offence. So if you copy ten songs, there's ten times fifty thousand dollars, or if you're a corporation, up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and a possible term of imprisonment up to five years. Why is copyright important? It's important not to protect... If copyright, is, if copyright is not protected, then people who create TV shows, art, music, computer games will not be rewarded. They won't get paid for making those TV shows, music or computer games. If they're not rewarded or paid, they won't make them. So it's important to support creators and find legal ways of getting work and paying a fair price for it. Remember, not getting caught doesn't make it legal, all right? Uh, there's a couple of sources there. Thank you for watching.